wonderful to meet you, Mr. Elijah Wood. Nice to meet you too, Greg. Yeah, congratulations on the film. How fun. Thank you. Absolutely. I think you, you know, you nailed the stash in Come to Daddy, and you certainly nailed the look of strong hair, which is kind of this latter-day Chris Angel kind of illusionist. Can you can you describe what you uh, wanted to really bring to the role or how you approach this really quirky character? Sure. I mean, it's a combination of elements uh, in terms of the visual sort of uh, aesthetic, you know, some of that inspiration. Chris Angel's a, a, a great example. Uh, he certainly was part of the inspiration. Um, you know, there were there were these sorts of ideas early on um, on the film that I worked with uh, with Ant prior to this come to daddy it was sort of a similar process where aunt would send these kind of you know really uh graphic ideas of what the character would look like and then you know we we find the through the process of hair and makeup and wardrobe uh, a kind of you know a, a combination of those elements with what feels like it could somewhat exist in the real world so trying to find a balance between what feels like it could be too absurd was holding on to some of that absurdity because it's hilarious <laughs> Uh, and then also finding, you know, kind of something that feels somewhat realistic. Um, so it was just a process of discovery, you know, g getting to New Zealand and going through the wardrobe process and, and kind of putting things on and finding him. And then on top of that, there's just the sort of playing him, right? The kind of the uh, overly confident uh bluster that that he sort of swings into his daughter's life with um trying desperately to impress her thinking that he is in control and then immediately sort of falling flat on his face uh because she sees right through him and and kind of playing with that and enjoying that part of him as he sort of strips strips those things away uh over the course of their journey so a, a lot i mean a lot to a lot to play with um as well as, you know, trying to, in the few scenes where he's dealing with cards, uh, to make sure that those things looked accurate, that I, I didn't look like uh, an amateur holding holding a deck of cards and 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 shuffling and fanning. Um, so I worked with a magician, an incredible magician called Mike Pischiata, um, who's based in Los Angeles, for about a month prior just to work on those things. There aren't any specific real in-camera tricks that I needed to achieve. Um, but the my primary concern was just that I looked like I knew what I was doing with cards. So that I, I spent a bit of time with him, which was great. Nice. You nailed it. You nailed that too. I understand you brought your family to New Zealand for the yeah. shoot. And why was that important for you? I can sense probably why, but why was that important for you to bring your family to New Zealand for this production? Well, look, I uh my kids had never been, my wife had never been. Um, so that was huge. You know, New Zealand represents uh, a massive part of my life. Um, it's a place I, I love dearly. I hadn't been in nine years. And I, you know, some of our, some of our dearest friends, aunt included, live in New Zealand. And so it was important for us to just go and visit as a family. So that was part of also the appeal of this was like, you know, it was almost like a working family vacation. <laughs> Like, let's go to New Zealand and kind of, you know, connect with the country. Whilst also making this fun wilderness movie, um, which was kind of the pitch. So that, yeah, I, it was important to me in that respect. Um, but also just simply to visit that place again and let my kids run in the, you know, into the wilderness and, you know, uh, experience all of the beauty that that place has to offer. Yeah, I'm sure they've seen you in The Lord of the Rings, yes. They have not. No, no, my kids are too young. <laughs> they... ah, okay. So in the future. Yeah, in the future. I think my son is aware of the fact that I'm in it. Um, there's a sort of loose association or an association with the character Frodo that he's seen in like figurines, but there's no real sense of what that necessarily means. I've just started reading The Hobbit to him. Um, he, he's five, so it's it's still a little early, but uh, yeah, they won't they won't see those movies probably for another six years maybe more got it maybe i was you know in watching nell fisher here i'm thinking someday this woman this young you know actress is going to win an award she's so like wise behind her on her years what are some um your your experiences your thoughts of working with her she's so sharp oh nell's incredible and you know the task that she had 
is so extraordinary. You know, she is the engine that drives the movie. Um, she is the leader of the dynamic between her and I. And so, you know, that that's no small thing to 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 step into a film and kind of carry the movie on your shoulders. She is the bookworm, right? Um, and is the the one that's that's sort of hyper verbose, really quick witted, shooting me down constantly. Uh, and she just entered with such enthusiasm and preparedness um, and, you know, acumen in regards to what, what she was capable of doing um, that she made it look easy. And, and the dynamic between the two of us was just easy. She's lovely. Uh, and in many ways embodied elements of her character. Um, and we had about a week prior to shooting, which was really helpful just to get, a sense of you know put, putting those scenes on their feet getting to locations uh and and sort of blocking scenes out so there was a real sense of preparedness before we got to those places so we knew exactly how we were going to approach it and having that i think really helped both of us honestly um but yeah she's she's incredible uh and she's obviously going to go on to be you know an extraordinary <laughs> extraordinary actress yeah, you two really had some great chemistry on screen. It was just such a delightful, it's such a delightful film comedy with a little bit of mystery in there, and there's a little bit of edge in there. It was so great. Uh, you know, one must ask you about um, the monkey, which is an adaptation of the Stephen King thing. It looks so trippy, so out there. I know you probably can't say much about it, but if you were to describe that experience or the movie in uh, like three words, you know, three different words, what would that be for you? Well, it's truly a horror comedy. Um, it is really funny and really bloody. <laughs> it looks really bloody. It is. Uh, listen, I'm a I'm a huge fan of Osgood Perkins. I have been for years. Um, as a as a writer director, he's he's made some extraordinary films, and um, I'm thrilled that he's having a a moment now where people are finally I feel like recognizing how brilliant he really is. Uh, so when he called and, and asked for me to participate in this in this film, uh, I left at the chance to do it. The script is great. It's very unlike anything that Oz has made, um, primarily because he's not really made anything in the in in the kind of comedy space. Uh, and so it's just it's it's a thrilling piece uh, that I can't wait for people to see. Um, it was a blast. And I yeah, I have a, I have a very absurd, funny role in the movie uh, that I'm I'm excited about. Yeah, I, I think we're all excited about it. The trailer is a trip. Um, are you excited about what might happen next with Toxic Avenger? Everyone's been waiting for that. Dude, same. Um, I know. I've been waiting for it as well. Listen, we we had some pretty incredible screenings last year um, at Fantastic Fest and Beyond Fest where audiences got to see it. The movie is so good and so ridiculous and, you know, very fittingly a trauma remake it pays great homage to those films and it fits sits beautifully alongside them in regards to the absurdity of its comedy um and its gore and and grossness um with with a really wonderful heart at, at the core of the of the filmmaking or, or of the story um I, I don't know when it's gonna come out <laughs> it's not on me uh that's on legendary but i really hope that that it will eventually see the light of day and and find its audience. Um, it's very much a uh, it's it's made for trauma fans for sure, but I think it has a wider appeal um, in that it just has a really great kind of father son story at the core. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm excited for people to see it. It's great. Macon Blair is an amazing writer, director, actor. I'll always always support that dude, and anything he asks me to do, I will certainly do. Nice. Well, one quick last question for you. you. Your career spans over 30 years or 30 years or so. What would you tell your younger self? Um, what would I tell my younger self? A bit of advice, perhaps. I don't know. Probably tell myself to go buy a house in New Zealand when I have the chance. I think it's great advice. And then you have that cool, beautiful landscape there. Absolutely beautiful, yes. Um, it's a pleasure to connect with you. Congrats on this and all the future things you have coming out. 